Hello everyone, Historical Modeler here, and in today's video I'll be building and reviewing the 1 to 87 scale Union Pacific Big Boy kit by Ravel. This model, first released in 2003, is one of only a few static locomotive models commercially available. Its simple construction and affordability provided me with a great opportunity to learn how to airbrush and weather a model steam locomotive. The box displays attractive artwork depicting Big Boy number 4006. Upon opening the box, I examined the boiler. There are many nice details present, but I was disappointed to see that the handrails on the sides were molded on and plastic filled the space between each stanchion. Though it would be possible to remove these and replace them with wire, I was more focused on honing my airbrushing skills and less concerned with detailing for this project. The tender shell is largely crafted from a single piece of plastic with some simple construction required for adding the coal load, ladders, and a few other elements. Two sprue trees come with this kit. A simple display track is also included with molded ballast. This kit can be built to represent locomotives 4006 or 4023. The decal sheet contains the appropriate markings for these two locomotives. I chose to model number 4023 since I visited this locomotive in Kennefick Park several times on drives through Nebraska. To start the build, I painted the inside walls of the cab with Tamiya XF73 dark green. All the paints I used for this build were by Tamiya and were thinned with Tamiya thinner when applied by airbrush. Each paint is mixed with two drops of thinner for every one drop of paint. I've included a list of all the paints I used for this model in the description. Next, I painted the smoke box and smoke box door with Tamiya XF53 Neutral Gray. Once the gray had been applied, I used a brush to paint the whistle just behind the smokestacks. The gold paint looks rather brilliant in these shots, but it'll be toned down with a dusting of black later. I then masked the smokebox area of the boiler and the inside of the cab in preparation for a coating of NATO black, which will cover the rest of the boiler and the walkways that line it. Tamiya masking tape was used in this step. The majority of the model is painted in XF69 NATO Black. This is a great color for steam locomotives since it resembles a weathered shade of black that provides scale and realism. NATO Black was also used to paint the number boards and grab iron on the smoke box door to reflect the appearance of 4023. At this point, I began weathering the fronts of the boiler. I applied heavy streaks of NATO black to depict soot running down the sides of the stacks, and gave a lighter spray of NATO black to the area overall to darken it. The firebox should be painted the same color as the smoke box up front. I didn't bother masking this area since the boundaries between the firebox and the boiler would be obscured by future weathering. Next up was the backhead detail and the bottom of the boiler. These two had to be painted before I could complete the boiler assembly. I was happy to see a decent level of detail on the back head. Although this will be very hard to see once the model is complete, the fact that the cab is fully open in the back offers the chance to see the painted details. This open cab design is inaccurate, however, and really should be closed off by a wall and two narrow doors. With the boiler assembly complete, it was time to join the wheels to the frames. Being a 4884 locomotive, the big boy has a lot of wheels to deal with. The frames and wheels were all painted with NATO black and went together fairly easily without the use of glue. Be careful to mind where you place your wheels on the frame, as the wheels are not identical. When the wheel connects properly to its axle, you should hear a little snap. 
Once the wheels had been placed in their appropriate frames, I turned my attention to the cylinders and valve gear. I was a little disappointed that so many elements of the valve gear and cylinders were molded onto a single part. A small brush was used to apply XF-16 flat aluminum on the rods and eccentric links. If Ravel had used more separate parts to assemble these areas, painting would have been a lot more straightforward, and there would have been more opportunity for detail. While working on these parts, I got startled by a very close lightning strike. The rods were similarly brush painted with Tamiya flat aluminum. Assembling the valve gear was one of the trickiest parts of this build. Because of all the paint on the wheels and rods, I had to apply a lot of pressure to get the pegs on the rods to fit into the holes in the wheels. I found it was helpful to push the rod into the wheel by laying the wheel flat against my modeling board and pressing downward. the holes in the eccentric cranks, part number 25, tended to be a little too small for the pin in the eccentric rods. Making the hole in the cranks a little larger using an X-Acto knife resulted in a much better fit. It's worth noting that the kit comes with two air compressors which belong on both sides of the frame just above the front pilot wheels. These are not mentioned in the instructions, but they do belong there. At this point, it was time to prep the boiler for its attachment to the frames. When attaching the front frame to the boiler, no glue is required, as it will be secured by the stationary rear frame. Just make sure that your steam pipes slide into the holes on the top of the cylinders on either side of the locomotive. The rear frame snaps into place, utilizing some holes in the boiler. I noticed that many steps during this build did not actually require any glue, which made for a clean building experience overall. The trailing axle also snaps into place beneath the cab. Tamiya Gold Leaf was used to paint the headlight. I waited to add this to the pilot deck since I wanted to give the pilot deck and valve gear a final spray of NATO Black to ensure good coverage and to weather the aluminum paint. Now that the valve gear was weathered, I attached the pilot deck to the model along with the recently painted headlight. With that, construction on the locomotive was finished. Putting the tender together was very straightforward. Only a few separately applied parts were needed, which included the tender deck, ladders, coupler, backup and warning lights, and the tender bulkhead. Naturally, the wheels were separately applied as well.
Interestingly, the peg on the drawbar that connects the tender to the locomotive is on the wrong side. You will need to cut it off of part 36 and re-glue it to the other side, as shown in this clip. To match the locomotive, the tender was painted in NATO black. The wheels in the centipede tender snap into place but it might be advisable to glue all or some of them in as a couple of mine were prone to falling out. Now that the locomotive and tender were fully built, I put together the display track. I didn't bother painting this track since I'm planning on making a display stand featuring actual ballast and some scenery later. It was now time to apply decals and finish weathering the model. Micro set was brushed onto the surface where a decal would go, and then micro sole was brushed on once the decal was applied. Tamiya XF2 flat white was used to depict grime and streaks on the tender. I had considerably more trouble with this paint than the others, as it seemed thicker and was more prone to produce grainy results after being sprayed through the airbrush. I learned an important lesson here to make sure your paint is of a good consistency before airbrushing, and also to make sure that your air compressor is able to atomize the paint. For the tender, I applied most of the white paint to the bottom along the wheels, and also made vertical streaks adjacent to the three hatches on the tender deck. The locomotive was similarly weathered with Tamiya flat white. Steam locomotives accumulate a lot of steam residue on the back of their boilers just in front of the cab. I sprayed the white paint primarily in this area, as well as along the sides of the firebox, trailing axle, and back drivers. Big boy locomotives also had safety valves to relieve steam pressure towards the center of the boiler above the rear cylinders, so I weathered the area below these safety valves to create some further contrast on the boiler. Based on photographs that I've observed, the injector on the fireman's side of the locomotive also tends to be discolored. I gave this area a light coating of flat white, and with that, the model was complete. Overall, this is a very nice looking model that gets a lot right. The proportions are very accurate, and the fact that this kit can be put together without using too much glue makes for a rather fun build. However, I feel that Ravel missed a lot of opportunities in terms of detail here. As a static model, including prototypical features that often have to be sacrificed on running model trains should be a primary goal. The molded handrails on the boiler, an absence of marker lights on the smokebox door, and missing union links and combination levers in the valve gear are attributes that could have easily been fixed. When comparing this model to the static steam locomotives of Trumpeter and Hobby Boss, and even the German locomotives produced by Ravel, it's clear to see that this model is one of the more basic ones on the market. That being said, because of its low piece count and small size, it is a very affordable kit that would likely appeal to young modelers. It's also perfectly possible to detail this model and overcome the issues that I mentioned previously. All in all, I had a great time building this locomotive and really enjoy looking at it now that it's finished. I'll leave you now with these photos of the completed locomotive. Thank you all so much for watching and happy modeling.